Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. It's your host, Street Urchin. How was your Thanksgiving? What were you thankful for? Personally, I'm thankful I was able to make a 25-hour solo drive in a 1995 Saturn across several state lines, making it to my new home closer to the West Coast. And let me tell you, it was unpleasant. <laughs> started talking to myself about six hours in. Anyways, today we're going to be talking about the ISFP personality and why you are one. The ISFP preferences these four functions in order. Introverted feeling, extroverted sensing, introverted intuition, extroverted thinking. Out of all the wonderful personalities, you will not find one that is more patient and caregiving. This makes ISFPs remarkable life companions or uh, indentured servants. However, having the supernatural ability to give a shit about the quality of another human's life comes with some drawbacks. Unless the dream of the ISFP is being fulfilled, their soul begins to wither away and die, as they are pouring a majority of their energy into another person without seeing the return. This leads to a great many ISFPs being in relationships that are seen as uh, unhealthy or just downright harmful. And over many years of this self-inflicted damage, many ISFPs end up diagnosed with some form of borderline personality disorder. But if the ISFP is living their best life, they become of creation and productivity. You'll find them tending gardens, painting portraits on walls, caring for animals, or just listening to how shitty your day was, and they will be happy to do all of it. The lead function of the ISFP is, of course, <laughs> introverted feeling. <laughs> It pains me with its demands. For the ISFP, this function governs nearly every aspect of their life. Every decision is moralized. Every action requires ethical reflection. Every step is principled and guided by right or wrong. Whether or not the ISFP tells you about it is dependent on your level of familiarity. If you're a stranger, they'll tell you little to nothing, making for less than interesting conversation. But if you're left in a room with them for an adequate amount of time, they will vomit feels lasers into your retinas. Next up, we have extroverted sensing. This is where the ISFP and INFPs diverge. The INFP is always looking for something new to feel good about. Perspectives, ideas, people, etc. The ISFP already knows what they feel good about and stick to it. More often than not, they derive the good feels from the five senses. Something as simple as a perfectly made soup, comfortable bedroom, touch of a loved one, or the sounds of happy farm animals. Of course, you may need to update that for the more modern ISFP, but the principle remains the same. They reach for happiness with their five senses. I, of course, reach for happiness at the bottom of a bottle. It's just barely out of reach. Now we move on to introverted intuition. As I've discussed before, depending on where this function lands in the order, it ranges from confidence in life decisions to I'm God's gift to man. ISFP seem to have found a pretty happy medium. Being the third function, the introverted intuition manifests as a belief in destiny or fate, depending on their mood. The ISFP has this uh, dream, this ideal living situation that they believe they should have. And these days, they're often pining for whatever that future is or was. As it is my experience that people with introverted introverted intuition in the third position don't really go out of their way to see it done, even when they're well aware of what it is. This could be anywhere from a lack of confidence to simply not meeting that special someone. And as a quick public service announcement, most cases of depression and suicidal thoughts I've encountered have come from ISXPs. So, you know, uh, give them a hug. Lastly, we have extroverted thinking. Much like the INFP, the preference for logic is pretty bare bones. It doesn't mean they're stupid. It simply means that on the topic of objective correctness, they will defer to others for the answers, typically from a source they feel is correct. So family, longtime friends, teachers they have a crush on, etc. So overall, the ISFP is generally non-confrontational, smiling, and a little goofy, as close to an angel on earth as you're going to find. They will try to protect you, clothe you, feed you, care for you, so long as they have love for you. But the negative is also true. Just as the angels do as God asks, the ISFPs will do what their loved ones ask, possibly to their detriment, which can lead to some pretty sad stories. So remember to treat your ISFP with as much love and respect as possible, because there's a good chance they would die for you. Got rather modeling at the end there. I've known several ISFPs. They're all wonderful people. Anyways, that's today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. For the ISFPs watching, remember that a change of perspective can help depression. And what we thought was best for us might not be the best for us, except with, you know, know, alcohol. That's all the time I've got for today, though. See you next time. Bye.